Welcome to Bank on Me, the reality show that means business. Coming to you from Scotiabank, Skymore Barbados, your host, Alex Jordan. In last week's gripping episode, we saw the elimination of popular contestant Raj Paul. Well, I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed, as is real, but, um, but it's all good because the truth of the matter is, is um, if I got our money right now, I won't change anything I was doing. Straight. I just made what I'm doing work better. The remaining five contestants discovered a wealth of information at the Caribbean Export Development Agency. And if you're not legally registered, then you can't participate in a lot of these programs. The other important factor is financial statements. We at Caribbean Export tend to utilize that information to see where it is that you need help and would like to suggest that when you do apply for grant funding, grant funding should really be an opportunity to do things that you could not readily do, but would certainly transform your business to the next level. So it's not a loan, you don't have to pay us back anything, but again, we don't pay you anything until you spend the money and we validate that expense, which comes down to documentation. We allow you to decide what is important to you. This is why I said this program is completely different from some of the other programs I've worked on. If you cannot figure out what your perceived demand is, then find something else to do because export is not for you. Export is about determining what somebody wants, is willing to pay, has a, re has a demand for something that you produce. Good service, whatever it is. You need to focus on where within the EU or the targeted area that you are trying to market to has a demand for that product well, on the route to market. Ensure that you have done enough homework before you go to meet with anyone. We had a two-day workshop at Hilton and we spent the two days basically not telling them what we were about, but basically asking them what we lacked. Well, what do we need to do to make sure that route to market is guaranteed? And they looked at it and said, you know, the beer, fantastic. Bottle, unique, ACL, whatever. But your outer packaging, it just doesn't, it doesn't tell the story. So immediately we went away and what we do, what did we do? Palm trees started to come out, lovingly crafted, stories started to go on the side of the six pack box, ocean started to show up on the six pack itself, and everything then moved the bear into the category which was the fastest growing category in the US, which is the craft bear series. You can't prove something is original. You can prove that something is not original by showing that something existed before it. Therefore, it can't be original. So you can't prove originality, you have to claim it. And then it stands as original unless somebody proves otherwise. Right? So that's the idea of copyright. If you are going to register a trademark, one of the first things that you should do, wherever you're going to register it, is to look at the trademarks that are already registered. Because your trademark has to be different. It cannot be confusingly similar to any trademark that is already registered. It has to be distinctive. So when you want to get protection for your business in export markets, you have to go to those export markets and you have to apply to them for the protection that you can get for your trademarks in their market. This was followed by sessions with their mentors at Ocean 2 and Seabreeze Beach Hotel. One of the things about export that, that I, would, I would caution you on is don't attempt it until you think you're ready. Okay. Because it's one of the areas where you can, you can lose credibility very easily. You go to an island, you're excited by it, and, and tell him you're going to have this product or that product available by for Christmas, and this Christmas comes, and next Christmas comes, yeah. and he didn't see the product. And he calls you one of the famous Bajan ghost traders. I like that as being part of the strategy for expansion, for the expansion. So essentially you do the English speaking first, and then we then move out into the Spanish speaking as well as the uh, French speaking country. Yeah. And then we set up a, a very clear roll-up strategy in terms of how we're going to roll that out in those countries over the next three to five years. 
Coming up, the five contestants present the export challenge. The winner of the challenge is automatically safe and one of the remaining four will be out. The Caribbean Export Challenge. Demonstrate and highlight your company's readiness to export products or services to Europe and the Caribbean and outline your export strategy. Life is full of possibilities. They're out there, just waiting to be discovered. At Scotiabank, we believe in possibilities. For over a hundred years, our customers have looked to us to help them uncover what's possible in life, in their finances, and in their future. Because when you believe that anything is possible, anything is. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. The winner of Bank On Me will receive a $15,000 cash prize from Scotiabank and rent-free premises in Satjay Bridgetown Center worth $25,000. Plus, $10,000 in communication services from SFA Communications and $10,000 in advertising from Carivision, as well as a package of courses from the Cahill School of Business. The contestants are ready to pitch the export challenge to the judges, and they will decide who stays and who goes. David Neelands, Shelley Williams, Richard Haynes, and our guest judges this week are Scotiabank representative treasurer Alison Stout, Ray Chiatau, CCO of Banks Holdings Limited, someone with many years of export experience. Contestants, you're on. For international entrepreneurs, such as Torchworks, Europe is potentially one of the most profitable markets in the world. Now, our product can definitely fit into the luxury market. Uh, we have created a distinctive look that stands on its own merit. Our luxury market research from Euromonitor International indicates that despite the global volatile economic outlook, the luxury goods market continues to prove resilient. In 2012, the luxury market grew by more than 7% and exceeded the US $302 billion. The EU market is actually rebelling against mass-produced products, as these products mainly cater for the lower market segment, which is mainly flooded with cheap imports from low-cost producing countries. Now, our current leadership team fully understand the product, what goes on into the making of these pieces, and we all share the vision for what we want, where we want our company to be positioned on this market. Great, great, great job. I feel like I can just jump up and hug you too. I mean, what an improvement. I am, I'm blown away. I'm blown away. I love this. It, you know, it could be better. For sure. For and sure. it will be better, I hope. Yeah. yeah. But it then really speaks to the branding that y'all and, and speaking to, yeah, lookbook is the way to go. I'm, I'm very, very proud of it. Tell you, over four weeks, right, y'all have evolved like miles and miles. I mean, it's a total difference when you first came on the show to this week. It's actually in incredible. Extremely impressed with how you've gone through your, um, your mission to look at the EU market. And, and I think you, you've definitely hit the nail on the head that there is an opportunity for customization in those markets. Well done. Well, preparing for this challenge was very, very eye-opening because it made us see the market that, that our product can really, really expand in. I have been mentoring uh, Torchworks and the experience has been extremely good. Even though it's been just a week, I think they have an extremely good product. Um, being in international trade, which, which can be very theoretical at times, sometimes it's not easy to always translate it to what happens in everyday life. And I think along with the Torchworks team, we have been able to translate some of what goes on in the world of trade in terms of the data and understanding markets and, and to what they do and what, where they want to go. So I think that's been very commendable. And today I'm going to let you guys try some of the tilapia that I have grown. This is some fried samples and some grilled samples, so please enjoy. Thank you. And it's tartar sauce in the containers. Now the EU is actually the biggest importer of fish in the world. It takes about 27% of the world's seafood imports. 
Um, to break it down into numbers that are important to me, this is 14.7 million tons of seafood that they bring in, which is 65% of the seafood that they consume. Um, if you turn it in terms of tilapia, it's 5.5 million tons of fish and 974,000 tons of crustaceans. That's where the crayfish will fall into. To look at tilapia consumption directly, um, last year it was 25,000 tons of tilapia was consumed in the EU, mainly in cities um, that will have high West Indian, African and Chinese populations, as well as European countries that have the highest fish per capita consumption. At the outset, um, you were very much going into the American market and competing yes. with Latin America. Um, and now this swing to Europe, uh, obviously we're well, talking about Well, because the, Europe. the assignment is for EU, I had to take that, that pitch because in terms of the distance, um, it would not make it as competitive. When you're going to America, we're actually closer to Miami than Latin America. So we'd be able to get the times over Latin America and the airport schedules in terms of plane flights. So we can compete with Latin America in the US market. But in the EU market, it makes more sense to go for the air flown because Latin America is disadvantaged. Christina, I was uh, impressed that you had the data on where the markets are coming from because like anything else, to understand your potential is to know what your competition is doing. Mm -hmm. um, do you know if Jamaica has additional capacity or if that price, if you were to go into the market, that $21, how, how sustainable is that? Would they start to reduce it once there's competition? Well, the research that they have online um, from the Fin First study is actually saying it will get better um, because Jamaica is kind of doing the, the starting work. Um, but because cod and haddock are being threatened, uh, those are the two main species that tilapia is competing with. Um, with respect to meeting your capacity requirements, mm -hmm. um, what is your product's time to maturity to um, market? For the tilapia and crayfish, it's usually six months. Um, crayfish, you may want to push to nine months if you're looking for a bigger, more lobster-sized product. Um, it went really well. I was very confident. I loved the material today because it's export and that's one of my favorite areas. I have been mentoring Christina Adams and it's been a fantastic experience. I've done a little bit of mentoring before, and um, but this has been a truly different and engaging um, thing that we've been doing. She's working with Tilapia and she's very, very focused. She knows what's going on. She has a very, very strong business acumen and ethics. So I was just here to, you know, guide her along a few of the areas where, you know, she was not as strong, but she on a whole is a very um, solid business person and she's going to go exceptionally far. How the EPA can help us. We need help with the legal framework in various countries to protect our talent. We need help networking, getting to know key people in our target market. This is just a graph to show you the, the market size in the territories that we initially want to focus on, which is going to be the UK, obviously because of our ties with Barbados, Germany because they have huge budgets for what we want to do, um, France because of the fashion industry and Italy the same. Casting Barbados is ready to export and that's why you should bank on us. These are some of our models that we have in our portfolio. And as a sample, live and direct, I'd like to introduce you to one of our models who has done work all across Barbados and beyond, Rochelle. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Obviously, it is a fairly competitive arena. I mean, everything is, but the truth is, there are beautiful people from everywhere. I know we have a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not quite clear how you're going to engage in that differentiation that is going to appeal to the market. You know, there are lots, as I say, you know, lots of people from other parts of the world who are living in Britain, living in Germany, you know, different nationalities. How, do you, how are you going to push that differentiation? Well, we have location here and we, we've got loads of people that want to to do production at a cost-effective rate and they love Barbados. We've done so many productions already for companies from Sweden, Germany, and they come down here for our for our beauty and they love our models because they, they say our models are unique, the mix is unique, and they're able to get everything that they need here. I, I was very excited about cast in Barbados when you first started. But as the weeks go on, I must say, I'm kind of losing faith. And that is because I just, 
I'm not seeing, I'm not buying into the concept. Um, because when you go to the the UK, there's so many casting, there's so many ad agencies, there's so many casting. And when you look at a place like, let's say, London, where you have African, you have Indian, you have white, you have you have Caucasian people, you have you you have a cross section of people, and you have Caribbean people too. What's the difference? I'm not sold okay. this week, I'm sorry. It was more challenging and it has been progressively more challenging, but fun still. So cross your fingers that I get on to the next round. We are looking to export the Caribbean experience to the UK, US and Canada. So we want to take what we offer here, but not just the food, the experience and the Caribbean feel to where it's most requested because we our clients are mainly from UK, Canada and the US so we want to take the experience to them. Take more than dining, it's an experience and make it your place or mine, we'll come to you. There are 1.35 million persons out of 6 million but this was, this, these statistics are a bit old so I believe that the numbers have increased due to migration but the numbers as you can tell um, are substantial. Two or three of these every day and we are good. For myself when I was studying in Miami I wanted Shirley biscuits and um, <laughs> and uh, anchor cheese because you always want to taste at home wherever you are. So we want to take that to them. With the EPA that offers um, access to the UK market for us because Barbadian Chef de Cuisines in the trade agreement can serve customers through contractual service suppliers so we work with our strategic alliances and go through them. Barbadian companies can establish commercial catering businesses in the UK. And um, our staff can easily obtain visas to work in the hotel and restaurant sector there. So this is a sample of our um, Caribbean menu we can offer to those corporate programs. Um, our Beijing sushi, which you all tried last week. Um, uh, Caribbean chicken breast in a curry sauce, uh, seasonal stew fruit in some Mount Garam, and mango sorbet. So the Caribbean food can be presented gourmet and still be Caribbean. People in, in the quote-unquote first world are, are all out looking for the most healthiest thing they can find. Is it a kiwi? Is it a pomegranate? Is it whatever? It's also a breadfruit. You're focusing each week on the challenge at hand. Yeah. but still having a practical, realistic approach to your presentation to us. Yeah. That doesn't vary into, you know, la la land, that's not possible, yeah. right? Um, I think your personalized approach to your business is, is a winner. If you can save people time, right, um, and money these days, it's, it's a, a winning business, you know? I'll just give you a sample. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> export is something that we currently do, so to export to UK on a larger scale is something I had in my five-year plan, so it made me fast track and think ahead. I've been mentoring for over 15 years and working with Dane has been really awesome. Um, I'm a foodie, so I'm, I'm, I love his product, Caribbean Villa Chefs, and he, he's a chef, he's an artist, so working with him is I transcribe what he does. I keep him focused, just remind him, you know, we have great conversations about his product. He knows where he's going. So this is just a, a lovely journey to be taken with him. Now our export potential involves several things. You can't necessarily touch it. You can't lift it. As it goes through customs, there's no weight to it. Mm -hmm. However, it's an email away. You record the files, you edit them, you, you, you compact everything into content-ready television programs and you simply email it and you wait for the money to hit you like a tornado. Another way we can earn foreign exchange, and we have begun this process, is our major sponsors are international brands. Nush Mostagimi, who is the owner of Hip Hop Canada and the music organization in Canada where they actually sponsor the Juno Awards, have confirmed that they will be title sponsors of Carefest 2015. And so we are going to be exporting a CD-DVD combo of this event where the telecast footage after it's shown 
and after the earnings have come from advertising, will be compiled into a physical product which you can order through Amazon.com. Right now we're very excited because we have the number two female R&B artist on American Airlines as we speak in the sky heading to me. Um, <laughs> we're bringing her here to Barbados for a massive event. We are very well connected. We have done this. We have done our research. We know all the big, the big players in the game. We have their cell numbers. They're on speed dial on my cell phone as we speak. I don't like to blow my own trumpet all the time. Um, <laughs> but I, I would say that, that my country has really tried its best to educate me as a music business professional. I, I was part of the, Q, the delegation to Cuba with the late David Thompson, where I, I met with the, the only record label there. I sat and watched the, the Cuban Music Awards as they took place. I negotiated with the Cuban Minister of Culture, where at the time I was Deputy Chairman of COSGAP and was able to confirm that their copyright agreements there would coexist with ours here. I have one comment. In response to your note about earning foreign exchange, this comes at a time when you know the government is looking to stimulate the foreign exchange earning sector. So I think that this idea definitely has you know some potential. Thank you very much. Do you think you're going to find yourselves, yourself in a challenge where getting the best in the Caribbean, coming to Barbados year after year, um, how are you going to sustain that? Because Excellent question. My concern is that Trinidad and Jamaica um, they're going to see the benefit and want to then have a Carib Fest Jamaica or, or Carib Fest Trinidad. And can you sustain that year after year in Barbados? Excellent question. I've actually addressed that in the document you're holding. Good. And um, over the next 20 years, we have selected 20 different Caribbean countries where we're going to be having Carib Fest. Mm -hmm. I think every question from the judges are, um, is meant to kind of make you think and get on your feet. So they're actually trying to stump you. So I come prepared for that. From the first time that we actually went through the first session, Moving into the, session, the second session, what we actually saw with the judges is the ability in order to focus, because he's involved in so many different things, is let's focus on this particular project and let's make it true to this rock. Yeah, I think Christina is back on form again. She, she does her research, she knows her numbers. I think that she actually sees a market in Europe now. That's a, that's a real market for her. You know I mean? When someone in the overseas market is talking to Christina, the fact that she understands and can speak the language is what will sign her the deal. Yeah, I thought her information was well presented and it clearly identified the opportunities. What a great product. I mean, they have, again, I mean, we were a bit skeptical along the road because they were, they were kind of not quite catching it, but, 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 but this presentation. Last week they weren't too sure. They knew what target market they wanted, but they didn't know how to get there. Yeah. Uh, this week they, they have listened, they have researched, they had background information to back up everything, and they have just been introduced to a new market, a totally new market they did not know about. I mean, over the last four weeks, right, they have evolved more than any other group, any other team, any other product. I mean, it has been amazing the way that they have an, and feel the sense confidence in their presentation. Four weeks ago, you wouldn't have. Uh, uh, correct. Because of Cindy's business, that it makes it hard to to get our heads around advancing it. Yeah. The, the difficult part of it is how, how she gets to another level. I think that without, without the... I mean, the key thing is to partner with other agencies, I think, globally. Yeah. What I like about the business is that he doesn't have a massive amount of overheads. So in other words, as he requires chefs, he then hires the chefs. He doesn't have people sitting down, you know, just wasting money on when the month comes around. It's a very efficient business. And I think it has massive growth potential. And his thing, he said two weeks ago, he said, I'm not the best chef, right? But I have incredible service. I like that. I think if Dane had to walk into to my business and pitch me, his business to me, I wouldn't be sold. Hmm. Had I not known and experienced that business before, would I be sold him walking through the door and sitting down at my desk and telling me, you need to invest in my business. I can see the model of the business is good, but he has to work on if he's going to be the spokesperson for his business, he needs to be stronger. You know, I'm in the industry myself and I know Ronnie is very well connected. And the truth is if you're not connected, you, you can talk all you want. You can't get it done. He has the connections. His problem was, is that he, he has the dreams, he has the vision, but he, he 
didn't know how to make money from it. He now yeah. has that correct mentor, mm -hmm. which it has that financial, yeah. sound financial background. So it makes Ronnie's dreams more realistic yeah. Yeah. now. On the export side, the whole idea of long term, picking 2015, working towards a date, is always the most sensible way you could take business. Um, that's something that we don't do a lot of. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank, discover what's possible. Everyone is waiting to hear, so judges, tell us who has won the export challenge and is therefore safe. We go first to guest judge, Ray Chiatel. On behalf of Caribbean Export, the winner is Christina Adams of Adams Aqualife today. Chris, Christina, we have looked at your presentation and your information on the challenge. Certainly it hit all the check marks, so congratulations. And for our next successful company tonight, we go to our second guest judge from Scotiabank, Alison Stout. Go Coast Records, Ronnie Morris. We'll see you next week. Ronnie, I just want to reiterate my comments about the export value of your proposition. You know, um, it came at a time when, you know, we're looking to focus on foreign exchange earning potential. You know, so we do think that your proposition is bankable. And now for our penultimate finalist, we go to Judge Richard Haynes. And the next safe company is Torchworks. <laughs> Torchworks, you guys have evolved massively. I mean, from the when you first came on the show until now, it's unbelievable how much you've grown. And you've hit every single challenge, nail right on the head. So congratulations, and we look forward to more next week. Congrats, guys. All right. We're going to go now to our final two judges who will tell us who, who's staying and who is going home. Um, Dane, you have a very innovative business. We all think it's a great business. It's workable. It, there's a desire, demand for it. However, we feel, the judges all feel that you need to spend more time in your presentation and also focus in on that service that you find, um, that one service of getting the butlers in and everybody into place. Just one focus. I think you're also doing something unique by using different employees who are already engaged in different pursuits and creative pursuits and bringing them under your roof and therefore giving them another challenge, which I think is an interesting aspect. Cindy, you know, we've seen some of the people that you've deployed in different uh, casting operations and, and you've mentioned the Swedish beer commercial and so on and that's all very laudable but somehow we think there's a connection missing in terms of the the Barbados model to the Barbados um, and I think that needs to be sold a little stronger in terms of your own your own selling concept. Unfortunately we can only have one person going through this evening and that person is Dean. Next week, four hopeful finalists head for Scotia Bank for valuable insights and the Scotia Bank Challenge. Until then, bank on me. Absolutely. It has been so much fun, especially Mr. Ronnie. Ronnie is hysterical. I had a really good time. I had a great time learning from each challenge, and it was a great experience.